Hey everybody, it's Andy. Let me make sure this stream goes live. It looks like it is. Uh oh. Oh no. There we go. The technical gods just ain't been loving me the last couple of weeks. <laughs> hey, Thursday live office hours, my favorite spot of the week. It really is. It's there every week for me. It's like my little life preserver. But I'm here helping you build a career you love. Get in, say hi, get in the chat, put some question marks in front of those questions. Kibitz with each other, that's great. But if you got a question for me, make sure there's some question marks in front of it. Let me know who you are. Let me know what you do. Let me know what you need. And let me know where you're from. And if you're in the Mile Walk Academy, please use your little hashtag medallion that I love to see so I can give my boot campers and my I-teamers and my resume writers and all that good stuff and all those good people a shout out. I think everything's working. <laughs> and if, you've, if you could have followed me for the last week, you'd, you'd, you'd think I was like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Everything is a little bit... Uh, uh, I, I need to double and triple check everything these days. Okay, looks like we got everything in order, and I've got uh, a bunch of uh, I've got a bunch of announcements to make. A few really important ones. One of them I want to mention to you right away, just to let you know how stoked I am about this. Is next week is Community Appreciation Week, which means I'm live with you every single day, Monday through Thursday. And if you are in my job search boot camp. Uh, I'll see you on Friday for a special uh, session as well. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the events are out there. You can see my black and white face. The cards are all there. If you are uh, synced up to the Mile Walk Academy live calendar of events, we drop them right in your personal calendar of preference. That's how cool we are. Okay, let's get rolling. I uh, DFP79, I see you unloaded on me this morning, and what I'm going to ask everybody to do, uh, just just for uh, you know courtesy's sake, uh, please please stick to one question because I know there's there's probably a lot of you uh, that are on here, and I want to try to get to as uh, you know to help as many people as I can. So um, I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to find now I'm I'm trying to find the chat. I think you were in here earlier, and I saw a whole bunch of them, and um, I, I don't seem to have all of the original stuff that you um, that you put in. So I've got you know my chat starts at at ten o'clock, and I don't I don't think I think you were in earlier. So maybe Stacy or Kara can can you give me. Uh, one of Dana, that's DFP79, one of her questions, because uh, I, I, I actually, I can't see them now. Um, and Kara says so she's got the chat. So so let me, I'm going to go on, um, yeah, you know what, Kara, do me a favor, give me, I, I have Ivana Ramos uh, at 10 o'clock, and I'm, uh, you know, my chats are, they're actually not, uh, they're not in sync, the two that I have. So, uh, uh, just send me send me some of Dana Dana's questions, or maybe the one you think that is the most rich uh, that we can help her with. And in the meantime, I will. Uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, I think it's I Ivana. Let me, man. I I'm. Uh, hang on. Let me see if I. Holy smokes! I've got. This is a all messed up. Um. I don't think I can refresh, and I don't think I'm going to be able to put um, this on the... Uh, oh, there she is. There's that good-looking face. Okay, Ivana or Ivana, however you pronounce your name, how do you negotiate a higher salary after a first proposal? So I'm assuming that you mean that they offer you something, a job offer, yay, uh, what I would what I would do here, there's many different things that you need to do, but I'm just going to point you to my salary negotiation playlist. I've talked about this ad nauseum. There's a number of videos that I explain exactly how to do that. It is a complicated situation. There are several different factors that that you need to take into consideration. How close is it to the number you want? Are is it just more money that you want? Are there other concessions? But Ivana. 
honestly, just go check out my salary negotiation playlist and I would look at that and the answers are in there. All right, let me see. Um, I see Stacy. Um, I, I'm gonna be. I see a lot of multiple questions here. It's uh, it's a little difficult. Try to stick to one box these days, folks. Um, all right, DFP seventy nine. In sending out unsolicited resumes to company, I'm assuming of interest, without openings. Even if you have a contact, I gather that you're better off sending it directly to the CEO, COO person you'd like to work with rather than your contact because unless they are the person you want to work for or the decision maker, they may just pass it on to HR and say, check the job board, correct. Okay. Here, what Dana, great question. And I actually wish I had that and could put it on the screen, but I can't uh, for whatever reason. Here's a pecking order for you. Relationships make this world go round. If I have a contact at the company, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the contact and I'm gonna ask the contact for intel. If it's a legit contact, like somebody you can actually speak with. And I would ask him or her to let me know what the strength of their relationship is inside the organization do they have any political capital have they done anybody favors are they drinking buddies with somebody it makes no difference but i would get the insight from that person first then what i would do is i would reach out through them and see if they could forward my information to the appropriate person if they have a relationship if there's somebody in this division over over there and you're trying to get in that division over there and there's absolutely no relationship whatsoever then what I would do is I would target hiring officials using my boss hunting technique. That's what I would do. Now, you could go to the CEO or COO if it's a reasonably sized company, meaning it's not, you know, you're not reaching into, you know, what's the one I use? Disney a lot. You know, you're not reaching into the CEO of Disney, right? It's a small to medium sized company and, and you are in a functional capacity that would serve that layer. If you are not going to be reporting to the CEO, I probably would not be contacting the CEO if there was a person at the next lower level or the next lower level that was more of a target for me. If I'm a salesperson, I probably want to be contacting VPs of sales, senior vice presidents of sales, could even be directors of sales, uh, it might be the COO. You never know who, who's going to be managing that unit, but I would, I would stick in, in, that, in that realm. I would not be going to the CEO if I was an accountant or a finance person or something of that nature or a project manager, things like that. So you want to be smart about it? I would always leverage the relationships that I had first before I ever sent anything in cold. That's, you're going to be far better off. The ATS is, is the last thing. When you get to the ATS, I consider that not job searching. I literally don't even consider that like giving yourself a legit shot. So I would, I would, I would do it that way. I would lean on the relationship. All right, hope that helps. Uh, I am, uh, I, I've got a, let's see, I see Stacy in there. Um, I see one from Adam Stark, but I don't, I don't get the timestamps. Hang on, let me see if, Kian? Um, hi Andy, thanks for all your videos. Let me see if I can find this. All right. Hi, Andy. Thanks for all your videos. They are really helpful. I have one question about the company take-home challenge. How do you react if the challenge is too big to be a test? Say the challenge look like their company real issue and they want you solve for them. Make me feel they want to use me to solve their real issue for free. I am not entirely sure what you're asking me. Um, I, I'm wondering if I... If, if I let me take a guess here. They want you to go in for an interview and there's a challenge, uh, like a test. And they want you to they want you to, to work it and you think that they're not they're not gonna hire you and, and and take advantage of your expertise. I think that is a very remote, very remote, as in unlikely situation, because 
if you were able to ace that challenge, whatever that challenge is, I think the greater likelihood is that they would hire you. I really do. I honestly think that. Companies are not going to waste their time going through and, and, and bringing people in for interviews and having them take um, these challenges or these scenarios or whatever they might be if they're not intent on hiring them. I just, I, I believe that in my heart of hearts. So I hope, I hope that helps. All right, let me see. We've got, um, let me see if I can get back on track. Give me one of Adam Stark's. I think I have, uh, I, I think I'm there. Okay, Kara, I, I've, got, I've got it from here. I've got it from here. I'm going to take Adam Stark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this, I'm going to pop this up. I'm going to take your first one here. Uh, I want to do event planning, but the salary range is quite big as it depends company type, role, industry, and so on. How do I decide my salary range? My current freelance role is very low. Adam, uh, I can't tell you how to do that. You're going to have to look at the organization. I would start with getting an offer, getting their offer, and going from there, and then determining if you feel like that's something you want to do. It's, I would not, all of you, this is not specific to Adam, I would not be straining and busting a brain cell trying to figure out what the salary range ought to be for a position. I would go in, give it my best, go in with gusto, sell my butt off, maximize my, my negotiating leverage, handling it the proper way through, getting down to the end, see what they come to the table with, and go from there. And then, then it becomes a personal choice. Whether you think you're overpaid or you think you're underpaid, it makes no difference what you think. It's all about the value they think you're going to bring to them, and it's all about how much you want the job. What you ultimately want is you want this, they want to pay you this, you meet somewhere, you know, you meet, you meet somewhere in between those numbers and you go from there. I can't, I do not, I do not recommend anybody spend any time trying to get what the right ballpark number is for your position at any moment in time. You never know what this particular company you're interviewing with is going to pay you for what it is they want you to do. You don't know how much they value it. You don't know how desperate they are. You don't know how long they've been looking. You don't know how painful it is. You don't know what's happened inside the company. There could be a customer service issue that's been going on for six months and you're the person that's gonna fix it. They're gonna pay more. If you're just one of 100 people they're gonna hire, they're gonna pay less. Okay, so you don't, and it doesn't matter what the salary ranges are. So you can go spend a lot of time looking at the salary ranges or you can spend a lot of time trying to find companies that are gonna be that are going to be interested in hiring you. And I would spend I would spend time on the on the latter. So I hope that helps. All right, let me see. I've got Audrey Musgrave from here. Uh Kara, just let me know if that's the next uh the next one. I I I think uh let me get Audrey up here. All right, Audrey, in the question ask in the question asking part of the interview. After I ask a question and the hiring manager gives an answer, how do I respond to his answer without sound, sounding like a parrot? Awesome question. Awesome question, Audrey. So, it is, there is a, if you check my blog out, there is a, an article that I wrote about increasing your communication quotient. It's called CQ, like your communication intelligence. And one of the best ways to do that is there's a couple of different tactics. And, and, and I think this is going to be really important not only for you but for everybody and anybody who's asking questions or anybody that's doing any kind of interviewing or anybody that's doing any kind of selling or marketing or anything just to be a better communicator. You have to anticipate what responses you're going to get. Okay, so, so I always tell people whenever you ask a question, you want to make sure that you've thought about the possible answers, okay? Yes, no, maybe, how much, no, we don't do it that way. Yes, I would be open to that discussion. Whatever the question is, there's generally a finite, reasonable finite number of answers, and you likely know what those are. Think about them. Consider what they would be. Then say to yourself, if that was the response, then my next question would be this. If they said yes, 
They'd say, we'd be open to that. How do you want to proceed? I have to have a plan. If they say, no, I'm not open to it, you say, okay, that's fine. And maybe you, you're okay with that, or maybe it's a real problem. How are you going to react? Okay, so you're anticipating the possibilities, but open to any possibility. Then what you do is, I like to do what's called an intent check. The intent check is you can, if it's something that needs to be verified, meaning I said something to you, you want to let me know that you received it with zero distortion and you, that you completely understand me. It sounds like, it smells like, it feels like, it. any of those, pick any of those. Okay, so it sounds like what you mean is, and then you use different words, okay? That is not being a parrot. That is saying, I gotcha. I feel you, right? I know, and then what they're saying is, that is what I meant. If that's the case, then, and then your follow-up is. Now, you do not need to do that for every single question. If it's pretty clear, yes, no, and, and they're brief and abrupt, you got it, move on, or you can you know, continue on your, your path depending on how, how elongated that discussion needs to be. But if you anticipate and then you, you do the intent check, they're going to know you received it. Remember, communication is about message transfer. I say something, you receive it with zero distortion. If there's distortion, we've technically miscommunicated. So you got to remember that. But for all of you, I would check out, check out that uh, article on my blog about how to increase uh, your communication intelligence or CQ or something like that. But if you, if you type CQ on my blog, it'll come up. But I hope that helps and you will not sound like a parrot. Promise. All right, let's see. I, I, my cohort tells me I'm back on track. One thing I'd like to mention, we, uh, we've we been having some trouble with our emails and a lot of you are not, were not getting them. Some of you were, some of you weren't. And in the event that you feel like you missed anything, you, maybe you were trying to get a download, you didn't get it, maybe you didn't get my Tuesday Tips email or whatever, let me know. And keep an eye. We sent an email about live office hours this morning out of our old system, like our comfortable shoe. We know it works. Uh, but we, we are in the process of transitioning, and so we, we want to do more communicating. It, it is a big undertaking when you have a lot of people in your community. So, And I want to make sure you're getting what you, what you asked for, especially the free stuff. So, so just make sure to keep an eye on that. And if you're, not, if you're ever not sure if you're getting the emails from us, you can always email us at support at milewalk.com, and we'll be happy to help you. Kay, how you doing? Joshua? Negotiate a start date. You sure can. I'm not sure what the question is, but you can. Sarah Oakley, my current role is up in July, but planning a cross-country move. How do I go about looking for a short-term role? Love this. Sarah Oakley. All right. Sarah with an H. My current role is up in July, but planning a cross-country move for November. Okay, so you still, you've got some time. How do I go about looking for a short-term role? So... I, if, if, if all, now it depends on what kind of, what you didn't tell me is what kind of short-term role that you want to look for. If you're a project manager and you want to look for a project management based consulting, contracting, temp position, if it's something of that nature, you're an accountant, you can do a temp thing, right? You do something like that. What you can do is you can contact staffing agencies. You can also contact companies and see if they're open for, for temporary positions, that's if you want to stay in line with your profession. The other alternative is if you want to do something where you're just you're you're raking in some 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 dough, just because you don't want to, right? You got a little three month gap there. I mean, there's I would look for temporary positions like bartending, serving, and anything of that nature where the positions themselves can be flexible in the number of hours. I My favorite diner that I go to, uh, you know, the, the woman who uh, has been helping me through the cold months is, you know, she works for a construction company. So she's got a lot, they, they have a lot less uh, activity in the winter months. She serves at the, at the diner, right? Something like that. But those are, you know, those are definitely uh, options depending on which one of those buckets you fall into. That's a great, great, great question. Hope that helped. All right. Kay Lee, being a graduate student without work experience, have no idea about how to add coursework into my resume. Fantastic question. 
All right. One thing that you want to know here, Kaylee, you 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 could if you want, if you when you say without work experience, if you're a graduate student, that means you've at least had let's say four years of your university or college or what or wherever it is that you've gone. To, you know, two, you've probably got summer jobs or holiday jobs or other things that I would hope that you could roll in. If you are a graduate student and there are significant projects that you're doing, research that you're doing, other things that show organizational skills, researching skills, communication skills, anything that is germane to the type of position that you're looking for, there's it's oh it's okay to have an education section what you're doing and then specialty projects it, it's there's no problem with that that really is none 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 whatsoever if you want to call that out especially if you're uh, if you're uh, young in your in your profession so any recent college graduate could do that so it's 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 something that's that's common it's something that's common but great 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 question All right, I think I am on track now. Let me see. I'm sliding down. <laughs> Looking for the question. Hey, while I'm scro- while I'm scrolling, if you're loving this, click the thumbs up button. Help me out here. Share this. There are people that need help. All right. I'm looking for questions. All right, AB. How do you determine how much more to negotiate for after given an offer? That's entirely up to you. What do you want? And it's not it's not as simple as uh, okay, you gave me a hundred thousand, I want one ten, because there might be a bonus. There might be restricted stock units. You might be able to negotiate for more vacation. You might be able to negotiate working from home two days a week. There's everything is negotiable. Okay, we. And it's not just negotiable in a starting job offer. I did a coaching session last night, hours ago, practically, where she's a boot camper. She's been in her job for a year, 14 months. We helped her negotiate the first offer. She is now up for a promotion. We are. I'm helping her negotiate her promotional offer. So what is it going to be? How would I handle it? What would I say? What would I ask for? But this is this is based on how much more you want. Now, I had a clip that went out on LinkedIn, it might have been yesterday, where I talked about you do not get what you want in this world because you ask for it. You get what you want in this world with employers because you convince them that you are worth it. How much you ask for is a function of how much more you do want but how, how convincing you were throughout the process that you showed them that this is the value that I am going to bring and I want to be paid commensurate with the value I'm going to contribute. And based on what you were asking me to do, the targets we've set, the things I'm handling, the things I'm doing, the business I'm going to bring in, the business I'm running, whatever it might be, this is what I want based on that. So I can't tell you how to determine how much that is. And I would not, again, going back to my previous point that I made uh, with Ivana, I would not be spending a lot of time tr- trying to determine, is this company underpaying, overpaying, or whatever. No, look at, run your own race. Think about that situation. There are no people. There are no two offers that can actually be compared Because there are so many, even though you try, there are so many variables with this company and this company. How much do you value the people that you're going to work with? How much do you value the training that they are going to to give you? Right? How much do you value the flexibility in your schedule? How much do you love the responsibilities you're going to get? What about the health care? What about the benefits? What about all these, uh, the employee stock purchase program? What There's a million different things that go into what makes that entire value package. Money is only one part. Think of it as a 100% pie filled with wedges. The wedges can slide, right? This wedge can shrink if I get a bigger piece of this of this portion of the pie, right? So so AB, uh, and I think it's Amy, but uh, but that's that's what I would tell you there. And and I believe if that's you, I think you're in the boot camp. So if you want to drop more info or hit me on Friday, 
or, or next Friday or whatever, or, or, or at one of these live sessions next week, happy to help. I hope that helps. All right. Sam, what do you got for me, brother? It's appraisal time. I have doc. Oh, let's just get you up here right here, buddy. It's appraisal time. I have documented accomplishments and awards and supervisor's confirmation and knowledge thereof. Yes, because you're in my leadership program and you know how to do that. Uh, next week is raised discussion time. What should I say if less than expected? So Sam and anybody, and I, I just got done saying about the session I had last night with her and she's fabulous. The, the, the fact is you need to go into the promotional raise just like you were negotiating your salary what's the difference you know the pain points you know what it's like to work there you 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 just have more intimate knowledge of everything that they offer so you have to know what levers you can pull you probably have an appreciation for that but if you don't i would ask meaning hey if you can't give me more base salary Based on my performance, what I'm going to do and so on, is there a way to make a special one-time bonus? Is there a way to increase my vacation? Is there a way to pay for parking? Everything is on the table. I don't know what the exact job is and how you're negotiating it, but anything is available. Last night, let me give you a little all you, because Sam, you know how much I love you, and I know salary negotiation is a big thing. But for any of you that are in Sam's position, as well as the boot camper I was coaching last night, one of the things that I told her to do is she, and and like a lot of you, over the course of the year or years, you accumulate more responsibility. She started, she was running the central region for something with, with no people. She had to hire her first hire. Then she's in the United States in the central area, and then they gave her Canada. She inherited some more people. Then they did some rotation, somebody left, she picks up a a job, a portion of her job is the Southern Territory. Now she's got this massive unit. She went from zero people to 40 people in the course of, of, of 12 months. And one of the things that I explained to her is while you don't want to threaten your employer, what you need to do is you need to get them to look at you with a different lens. This is a very, very important tactic that I want you guys to make sure that you're using properly, especially if you're, if you're negotiating an internal promotion. When the employer looks at you, they see you, they see the work you've done, they know they get a hometown discount, okay, because you're there, right? They... They know you're comfortable, you like working there, they like having you, so they're probably not gonna go as high as they would have to go if they went outside to get it. So what I told this woman to do is I said, okay, after you go through, we we gave her the script, she's gonna make her arguments, we gave her all the variations of anything they came up with, we, we basically scripted everything that she was gonna say, no matter what scenario came up. Then I said to them, after you make your play, after you say, this is the value I've contributed. I've contributed. You've seen it, right? You know what I can do. You're a known commodity. Let's take a let's look at this from a different angle. Let's just say sake of argument cuz you know I'm handling all these 40 people in all these three massive territories. But let's just say you had to start right now and hire all your directors again. We're all gone. And you had to rebuild this team. It would be like you'd have to hire two people to do what I do right now. And the fact, fact is, you don't need to hire an extra person because I'm handling it. But if I wasn't the one handling it, you're not saying I'm leaving, just saying, look at it from that vantage point. You'd have to hire two people to do what I'm doing. Person and a half, at least. So isn't it worth it to raise that another 20 grand? Right? Wink, wink. So you have got to give the people that you're interacting with multiple vantage points. So what Sam is pointing to about he's documented his accomplishments, I have a career achievements journal that you can grab. It tells you which 14 pieces of information you need to grab about your accomplishments so that when you get in the position Sam is in, you can remind your employer of your awesomeness with some concrete evidence because they ain't gonna remember. They won't. You live it every day. Okay, they just think the magic happens. Right? I tell Kara, look, I, I, I know the magic happens. I just count on the magic happening. But I don't know all the ins and outs and how difficult everything is and all that good stuff. So you need to explain that to them. You also need to show them, well, 
just imagine if I wasn't the one doing this. That's not saying you're going to leave, just, but just imagine that for a second. That ought to give him a, a jolt right in the chest. That's another way to go about it. But that, Sam, I would pull out all the stops, but, but that's a tactic I would have in my pocket. It sure is. All right, hope that helps. Kevin, how you doing? I got to take a sip of my tea. Mm. You know what? Before, Kevin, before I get to you, can I, can I show you guys something really quick? It's a free thing. And we've been trying to communicate this with you this week. And I know 1,200 people this week have gone through what I'm going to show you. And it's free. It's my job search uh, challenge. And all I want to do is show you what it is. So if you bear, bear with me here for a second, I've got a free challenge. And for those of you who, let me, let me see. Um, for those of you who are familiar or not familiar with the Mile Walk Academy, you've got this, oh, by the way, so here, here I am, here I am live. You see that uh, career, uh, career help here next week. That's me and you. Uh, go through, grab the interview intervention book. If you don't have it, it's free. We got some great courses, got some great leadership stuff, goal setting, all kind of career development. And we've got these challenges. Uh, one of them, well, the Master Your Craft is awesome, nine days of, of growing your, your skills. But the job search challenge, uh, just click it. You'll go into this. All you need to do is click the button and create a free Mile Walk Academy account or log into your uh, Mile Walk Academy account so that we can add that for you. And what, what happens is you're, you're gonna get this challenge. We actually send you emails every day for five days and we walk you through the challenge. So I take you through this job search challenge aimed at getting more job interviews. Uh, we talk about how to identify the potential employers, how to contact the people, what to say to them online, all the things you need to have covered. And then obviously all of this here, not everything's gonna go according to plan. And so what do you do? How do you troubleshoot the obstacles? And so it looks like this, you open it up. There's about, there's the, the videos themselves are all about a half hour. The last one is about 50 minutes. And I give you some instruction. There's a workbook here that you can that you can download to facilitate the process. Look at beautiful comments. You get in there. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too, too 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 far. But basically, you communicate with us. You let me know how you're doing. I cheer you on. It's really a, a great thing. But it's it's free. And um, and I just I want you to know that you can opt in, and then you sign up. We immediately give you a welcome email. Hey, thanks for, for signing up. Here's your first video. And then the challenge and the overview is unlocked. And then the next morning at 7 o'clock my time, because that's when the system says we have to send these apparently, uh, we send you another email. And I give you a lesson about identifying the people. And then we unlock that video. And then you go through that. And you can go through the system. It's really sweet. And it'll keep you on point. Very structured. Very broken down. People are loving it. I, we are getting emails and people are crushing it. So it's it's really, really a cool thing. It's free. It's it's pretty badass. It really, it really is. I mean, people just don't give this kind of stuff away. So enjoy, my people. Give us a running start into community appreciation week. So I hope I hope you uh hope you love that. I just love. And if you're loving that, click the little thumbs up button and share this. Sharing works, right? Mm. Okay, what do we got? Kevin? hey Andy, how to best reflect work experience. How to best reflect work experience on the resume if one has rejoined a previous employer. Consolidated on one section reflecting dates of employment and positions held to optimize space. Okay, so Kevin, couple couple of things only because you mentioned optimizing space. Folks, Write this down, what I'm about to tell you. Kevin, this is just, you, you gave me a great lead in for this. Your resume, two things about the resume that you've got to know. Number one, it is not, and this is not specific to you, Kevin, it, this is just in general. It is not to be thought of as a vehicle to write your work history. That is not what a resume is. Your resume is a marketing document 
that it should put you in the best light for the position you want to go to toward get whatever you want is however you want to say it so you want to make sure that what you're packaging in that resume is going to best highlight illuminate whatever you want to call it the things about you that you've accomplished and that what what it is to get the, or what those accomplishments are to in order to have the employer recruiter hiring official interviewer whoever's reading your resume envision what it would like and imagine what it would be like to have you working there that's the purpose of the resume it is not to list your work history the second thing about it is it is not your job to write a resume with the other person with the goal of having the other person get through your resume quickly it isn't that isn't the goal either so don't get confused with my video about how to get noticed in you know five or six seconds the, the most important thing that I want you to think about when you write your resume is the goal isn't to make it comfortable for the reviewer to get through it. The goal is to write a resume and package it in a manner that gets the, gets the reviewer to decide quickly that they want to speak with you. There's a huge difference in that. Okay, so, so the way you lay it out certainly will facilitate that. But your goal is to not get them to read your resume quickly. It is to get them to decide quickly that they want to speak with you. That's all the resume does at that juncture. So when you are highlighting your, res your resume, to get to, to Caven's point here, one of the things you do not want to do is do anything that slows down their ability to get to that decision and to get through the resume, right? You wanna, you wanna make it as easy for them to get through the resume as possible and anything that causes them to pause where they have to slow down their train of thought to answer a question that you were not sitting there to answer that you, you could have told me this, right? That would have been easy for me to understand if I had your resume and, and I was talking to you and I was looking at it for the first time but I'm looking at your resume before I'm talking to you. So when I see company A these years and then those years and then I got to look where the other company is and so on, it, it makes me stop because I have to now put these pieces together. And what was he doing? Hang on, was that continuous or not? Is he hiding something or not? You're making me go, you're making me work. Okay, you got to know that. So it's slowing down me and it's slowing down the decision that I want to make to talk to you easiest way to remove that is to say I worked at company a then I worked at company B or I work at company a now I worked at company B before that and I worked at company a again before that okay you went back to your company no problem what, what am I gonna say I'm probably gonna be thinking hmm, left company company brought him back must be a good dude that's what goes through my head right away now, I'll, I'll ask you about it, and you'll say something like, well, my family and I were moving, and I couldn't, you know, work there anymore, and so I had to take a new job in a different city, and so what, you'll explain it to me. But I can see it, oh, it's nice and continuous, no problem. As a matter of fact, that woman that I was telling you that we, that we, I coached last night, she worked at a company, one company, three different times. She worked at another company, two different times. And she's interviewing with the company she worked with two times again. So, I mean, it's a, it happens. It's not uncommon. So it's okay. Chronological. But I wanted you to have the insight. I hope that helped. All right. Thanks for the question. That was awesome. All right. Looking for question marks. Zipping on down. And a lot of kibitzing going on. Hey, Epiphany, DA, let's see. Jim Healy. Kara, check me. I, I, I'm, I'm zipping down. If I don't see the question marks, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing on by. No position posted at great employer. How do you recommend sending your resume or to who? Okay, couple of things. Jim and all. In for a little treat here because I got, I, I got it all. It's all out there free for you. Number one, 80% of jobs in the world are not posted. That's number one. So if you only seek out publicized opportunities, think about how much you're limiting yourself. 
Okay, that's that's number that's that's part one. Now, I, I also don't recommend that you just start applying online. I think that's a waste of time most of the time. But number one, eighty percent are not listed. Actually, probably more. So that leaves you to target organizations. Now, that job search challenge that I just showed you. That's why it's so effective is because you're identifying companies, you're identifying people, and then you're sending the messages. Now, if you, if you see an organization that you love and you don't see an opening, it's those two conditions. I prefer the boss hunting technique. I'm not going to go through the whole boss hunting thing because it's out there. There's a video out there and there's even a couple of cover letters that are free that are out there on my YouTube channel. You're looking, doing some investigative work, using some of the sites, LinkedIn and some others to locate people of authority in the group that you are likely to go into or an area that you have skills that you would be able to support. If you're in sales, you go after the head, head sales people. You're in marketing, you go after the head marketing people, right? If you're a little more junior, maybe there's a middle tier manager, something like that. But you're doing some investigative work. That's preference number one of the route I would take. Number two, you can also, uh, I have a no job opening cover letter. That's a little bit of a different angle. It's also not one that I would recommend sending to the, to the boss. I, I have actually a no job opening boss hunting cover letter in the boss hunting packet for you. That's free. And then I have a, a seven sentence cover letter that's the no job opening cover letter that you could send to the recruiter or to the human resources person or whoever else you can find that likely is in a position of that capacity. That's another route. So those are a couple of ways that you can go about it. There are many more, but let's let's stop at those two. And uh, I highly recommend that you do this. And I think that the majority of your reach outs should be to companies that do not publicize or do not have a publicized opening. Why? There's opportunities. They're always there. The best comp- companies are always hiring. They might have positions that they just haven't listed yet. If I'm the head of sales and I've got 10 salespeople, two of them or three of them can go. I'd be happy to trade up. If, if I'm trying to bump into an applicant tracking system, there is nothing there to submit, right? There's not a position. If I try to bump into the recruiter, the recruiter, to, the recruiter might be trained by the hiring official to look at everybody who comes in, but it is not a high priority on the recruiter's list, right? The recruiter's trying to fill the open recs. So the recruiter's not in pain. So if the recruiter gets, if you're in sales and gets a, a, a sales resume, a business development exec resume, he's, he doesn't care as much as the, the senior vice president of sales does. That's why you go that route. So, but there's, a, there's some nuances there, but heck yes, please do. All right, hope that helped. Jim, great question. All right, let me see. Zipping on down. Jeff Knox, hey, Sharonda, how are you? Federico, Frank Sewell, my boot camper. Darius Urban, my boot camper. Hanyan, my boot camper. And Stacy Gilmore, former boot camper, now Mile Walk Academy star. All right. Kara, keep me honest. I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Modest Virgo, hey. Virgo through and through. That's me. Adam Walker. Here we go. Adam Walker, how do you suggest handling salary negotiations via email or verbally? All right, wait. Adam Walker, let's read this one again. So let's, because I know, I know somewhere we're going to clip this out. <laughs> All right. Adam asks, how do you suggest handling salary negotiations via email or verbally? Now, I'm glad you put the word negotiation in there. Any negotiation for a salary or any kind of job offer, I would never, under any circumstance, no exceptions, zero exceptions, literally none, ever do this via email. Why? Number one, it's too easy to misconstrue what you're asking for. Number two, you can't iterate the negotiation real time with the person and determine, are they willing to budge? Are there other alternatives? Are there more creative options to satiate what it is that I need, the spirit of what I need? You're never going to be able to do that going through email. Now, what would I use email for? If I'm in the salary negotiation process, use it for things like, can we set it? Okay, I got your I got your digital offer, or I got it in the mail, or I got it online, or I got it from the system. 
right? That's basically how they get it to you. They either give you a link into a system because they want you to sign something in their system or they'll email it to you or they'll literally will mail it. That's becoming less common, but some people, some companies still do that for the pomp and circumstance of it all. So could we set up a, I got it. Could we set up a time to talk? Logistics. All right. That's okay. Now, if if they come back and they say, well, do you have any insight as to, uh, I do have ideas, but I really prefer to share them live, okay? Do not give them anything via email. The other thing that you can do is if you then talk, you go back and forth, according to all my salary negotiation tactics, you go back and forth, and then they email you back and they say, hey, Adam, we're good to go. We're going to give you everything you asked for. Great. Great. Give me the thing, I'll sign it. That's it, right? They gave you everything. Adam, we gave you 90% of what you asked for. Are you good with that? If you're good, you tell them. If you need more time, you say, you call them, right? You don't say anything unless it's yes, affirmative. Send me the form. Send me the link to the system, (laughs) whatever it is, okay? So you do not want to go back and forth. I really want to drive this home. You will bundle. I mean, you you will bumble fumble. I mean, you people. It's it's very difficult. Use it for logistics handling. That's it. At that very sensitive time, it's very important, and you should not be going back and forth a lot. One iteration, one and a half. That unless and unless it's very very complicated and filled with many different components that are assets that offer, you should not need many iterations because then it, you know, everybody gets sour. So I hope that helps. That's a, that's a great question. That's a great question. I'm, and I'm sure that Stacy marked that one. <laughs> I'm sure that clipped that sucker. Vienna, my boot camper. Vienna all in. You know, Vienna's got her own little nicknames in the, in the system. I try to give all the boot campers nicknames. Um, so so if, if you are a boot camper and you don't know your nickname or we haven't determined one yet, let's do that so I know who's who. All right. Love this, and since Vienna is a boot camper, no matter what she's asking me, we're popping this thing up here. All right, Vienna all in. Should you apply for a position for which you are overqualified that you can ask about growth potential, wait for something that you think is more suited to your skills? So wait, I think, I think, that, was, I think that was an or, uh, Vienna. So number one, if you love the company because you join a company, you don't join a job, you go. Now, if they look at you and they say, hey, Vienna, you're a star. You look like you're overqualified. Your response back is, I'm interested in joining a great company. I've, I've, I've specifically targeted your company because, and I'm open to helping you in whatever capacity is most valuable in what you need and what I can offer. And I'm confident that if you're as great a company as I think you are, and I do a great job, you will Give me more responsibilities as we go, right? Something like that. And, and, and there's a number of other things that you might have to iterate in that regard. Well, I'm a little worried about your compensation. I just told you, I'm open, right? I'm most interested in, you know, okay. And then if, you, if, if that goes back and forth and they're like, well, we're really concerned. It's like, okay, well, hang on. If you, if you think, I'm, if you think I'm, I'm worth that based on my skills that I bring to the table, is there a way... We can augment the role. Is it, is it possible that we could augment the role to coincide with or become more palatable or in line with the skills I bring to the table and that warrant the, the, the larger salary? You can go that route. There's a number of other ways. I have an overqualified video or two out there. Those will be really helpful for you. Check them out. All right, I'll see you next week and Friday for the boot camp. All right, great to have you. Hey, Aline, how are you from Brazil? April J. April J is asking, hey, Andy, how far back should I go on work history? I believe being at the same job for over 20 years is hurting my chances of getting an interview. April, everybody who is a beloved, longtime employee of a company, it does not hurt your chances as much as people like to think that it does. Now, you asked, okay, so it's two things. You asked a question about how far back should you go. I'm going to say it depends. I'll give you a couple of examples. If you've been working for 30 years, 
and you've got some experience in say your first 10 or 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 15 years that is not really as relevant maybe you got a couple of hop arounds you did some things that are not as germane to what you're doing now drop them off it's okay if you work for a really great company that you think people think eh, she spent 10 years april spent 10 years at that company 20 years at this company and it was a great training ground like me that happened to me my first 10 years were at what's now called accenture it was anderson consulting back then i leave that on my resume it's got this much real estate two lines but there's there's all my 31 years in in all its glory would be in my resume i think that's okay then you start getting down to uh okay well hang on i i i worked here i worked here 20 years and now i've been at my company 10 years so now i have to put all 30 years Otherwise, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to split something. You want your company dates to be clean, meaning you don't want to say you worked there, you know, for these these ten years when you really worked twenty. So so it so it depends is my answer. Now I think a good rule of thumb, I like fifteen to twenty years, if it, especially if it's germane and it's in align it's in alignment with what you're doing. You can always drop the year off your. Uh, uh, graduation if you if you have a college degree or something like that you can take that off if you want uh, no problems there but i it really is a it, it is a it is a it's not only i wouldn't i wouldn't just say it's a personal preference i want you to be smart about what you put in the in the in the in the years a while back and what people say is well andy i've been working 30 years and there's no way i can get my resume on two pages to which i laugh because i've been working 31 years and i could basically put a resume together in a paragraph or half a page or a page now if i want to take advantage of using two pages which is cool the 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 real estate that i'm taking up at the on the second page with my first 10 years is this much so what people don't realize and let's let's throw this in here because this is a really great thing for you guys to understand some of you might have seen my resume webinar three secrets to get your resume noticed and i showed you how somebody reads a resume they look at your name at the top then they kind of slide down look at the first half of the first page they look at it all at once they want to see your summary they want to see your accomplishments they want to understand the kind of skills you're bringing to the table and then on the bottom half of the first page i start looking down the column where did you work what did you do i go to the second page i scan it very quickly but what I didn't go into into the webinar is it's it's even more surgical than that. I glance very quickly at the top half of the first page. I slide down the second page, then I or slide down the column of the first page. Then I go to the second page and I zip down to the bottom. So I almost I almost don't even read the top half of the of the second page because why? Because you likely you likely have professional experience up at the top. At this point, I've already seen on the first page a lot of what you've done. Now, I haven't seen it all. I'm just talking about my first glance with the resume. I'm just getting acquainted with you. Okay? But I want to look at the bottom because that why? That's likely where you put extracurricular activities, boards you've sat on, volunteering that you've done, maybe your education, all that good stuff. Okay? That's actually more important to me than the stuff that's on the second page from a professional experience standpoint. And I'm not saying it's not valuable because I'm probably going to go through it. But first glance, that's how I spend my five seconds. So I'm just trying to figure out what's my first reaction. And I know a bunch of you are going to be like, well, Andy, hang on. You know, how could you not give more than five seconds? I didn't say I'm only giving five seconds. You get five seconds to get my first reaction to know if I want to put you in the I'm really excited pile or the uh, pile or the garbage pile. Now, when you walk in a bookstore and you walk right through the front door, how much time do you give those covers? It's the same thing. Are you going to go into a bookstore and actually open up and read every paragraph or first chapter of every book you're considering? No. Right? So, so, so think about that. That's, that's how I do it. And that's how I look at the book cover. So keep that in mind, April, and everybody else. I know that was a little more than you than you asked for, but I think that that's an important point that you need to know. Um, it's not it's not read. No one reads a resume left to right, top to bottom. They skim it, and then they don't even skim it in sequence. All right, good good little tip there. Hope that helped. All right, zip it up. Steve G, how you doing? Mabel Hay from New Jersey. 
Flying Uber Tuber. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Hey, let's put this up here. Take a look. What do you recommend for managing all the resources, information, data in a job search, spreadsheet, CRM or resource management system, pad and paper or other? RA. Okay. So, and Kara or Stacy is going to have to double check me on this one. Uh, there is, so number one, at a minimum, at a minimum, have a spreadsheet of where you've applied. Organize it by company, not position. Company, then role that you've applied to. If there was no role there, leave it blank. If there's a all that good stuff, then you want to right pack it in. Who'd you, who'd you contact? When did you contact them? And so on, right? All that good stuff. You could even put the language you use to contact them in a cell and start looking at did they get back? How you could you could go nuts? You could, how quickly did so and so get back to me when I'm using template cover letter boss hunter number one, right? Like you. And what did I send them? Like, look at that stuff. That's what I would do. Now, there is a system out there. This is when where I know I've said this before. Uh, I don't throw it out a lot, but there is a system not to be confused with the Hunter.io website. But there is actually a system out there called Hunter H U N T R dot C O. Can Kara? Can you check that? And let me know, or Stacy, or somebody, check that and let me know if that is actually the site. Uh, we've had some of the people in the Mile Walk Academy use it, and I think that they have really enjoyed it. And you can actually, and I'm waiting for my confirmation on whether I gave you the right URL there, uh, but they are, um, you are able to do a number of things like pop in you know, the, the, the ATS site and, and the job description and some of the other things. Uh, no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not that one. Um, it's, it's not, it's not hunter.io. You check H U N T R dot C O. Uh, hunter.io is an email verification, uh, system and that's actually hunter.io. Uh, hunter.co, H U N T R dot C O. Can somebody verify for me if that is in fact correct? Uh, because I don't, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. But, uh, but that is another one that I believe, and, and, and if, if I'm wrong there and we don't get confirmation before I'm done yapping about this, uh, I would check it out. But there is a site out there to that in that regard that I think peop, a lot of people really enjoy. Yes, that's it. It's called hunter.co, H-U-N-T-R dot C-O, Hunter Job Application Tracker. And you can do that. Now, that's for job apps and other things. But for people you've contacted and things of that nature where you're doing boss hunting, no job opening cover letters, and all that other stuff, I don't know how well it would handle that if you can add that. Check that out. I think that will help. All right. And I think you were sending me something. Did I miss somebody? Um, Oh, okay. I, I think I skipped a couple of these because, okay, make sure you give me question marks. I, I love the question marks. I can see them. Mabel. Uh, let's see if I could get back up to Mabel. Oh, here we go. Mabel. Hey, with the nice picture. How you doing, Mabel? How do you deal with the salary question if they ask again? Because I already told them that I see a job as a whole, not just salary, and did not give a number. Love it. Okay. So a couple things. Number one. I have two videos out there that is specific to how to handle the salary question. One of them has like a million five views. I mean, it's a lot. It's very popular. It was an original one I created in 2018. I recently created another one a couple of weeks back, and and it's kind of a, a 2020 update of the best answer to you know what's your expected salary or what what you should do to the salary expectation question. If they ask you the salary, and Mabel, I'm assuming that you're that you're you're talking about 
in the beginning of the process or early in the process and they're asking you how much do you want to earn or what do you expect or what's it going to take to leave or some other ridiculous question like that. What I would do is I would go with the answer that I've already packaged up for you just like Mabel is, is, is citing here. You know, money's important for sure, but I look at this holistically, right? There's a lot of things that go into it, what I get to do, who I get to do it with. You've obviously got benefits and all these other things, career development, and whatever's important to you. Then the recruiter says, no, no, I need a number because I'm lazy and I don't, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not talking to you if we can't meet your number. When the recruiter has no, no clue what they're actually going to pay you if they love you. But some of the, I not believe me, I'm on your side, guys. I know that these recruiters, they get all orange and yellow and red and they, they get all flamey and all that stuff. No, you got to give me a number. The next best route is not to give them a number, but to ask a question. If they're going to be this insistent, just say, okay, well, you know what? Um, I hadn't really thought about it. So I'm assuming that you have a budget in mind. Do you have a range that is acceptable internally for this position? If you share that with me, I will let you know if I'm comfortable with it. They'll give you, most of them will give you that range. Okay, they will. And if if they don't, that's ridiculous because if they if they know what the range is, they may as well just tell you. If they need an answer, they that's the quickest and easiest and painless way to get it. And then you you can what I would recommend at that point. This is me. I would just say yes. That would be fine based on what I know uh, at this moment. Sounds reasonable. Okay. Now when you get in there. That can all change, right? Because you're going to go through and discover a lot of things and all those assumptions that you that you had that were not your friend now become clear. You have much more, you're much more clear headed about this. You have clarity, you have insight, you understand the benefits package, you understand the job better, you understand the people you're going to be working with, all those other things that you now have stalled to get. And that's how I would go about that. And, and, and I'm not even going to go into all the other stuff about what I would do at the end, but to, to answer for you guys, that's going to hit a lot of the beginning part. That's what I would do as the bailout answer. Thanks, Mabel. That was a good one. And then what's this one? Brent, I think I missed this one. All right, Brent, hey, how you doing? All right. Brent is asking, site interview with the COO for a direct sales position tomorrow. Any key recommendations? Brent, you threw me in the big blue ocean. I got a million recommendations. There's 300 videos on my YouTube channel that talk about this. So, uh, being that it is a direct sales position, I would here I'm gonna give you one tip, okay, because I think this is really important. Yes, I want you to go and I want you to read interview intervention. It's free. You gotta pay a couple of bucks for the envelope and the warehouse servicing fees. Get that, read that. I would watch three keys to ace any job interview. That's a free webinar. It's about fifty something minutes of solid teaching. Check that out. I got all the job interview playlists. I'd watch all that stuff. Now, because you are in sales, you better make damn sure you close at the end, meaning you ask for the job. You close the job. I like, do you have any reservations about hiring me? I want to make sure, right? I want to get right to it. You're asking for the sale right there. So I would make sure that you you close with that. It's in the book. Uh, it's it's really important, and if you don't, as a salesperson, if you didn't close me, even even pretty lightly in the first interview, I'd be really suspect. I really I really would, especially if it's a direct sales position, right? It's not an account development position where you need to all soft shoe and schmooze and kiss them in the ear and bring them donuts on Friday, right? So so this is a this is a big time big time job. So I hope that helps. All right, I think I'm back on track. All right, Patty, who is not a Dodgers fan, but an Angels fan, because I, I think I responded to her via email, and she said, I said, oh, you're the Dodgers fan. Said, oh, I'm not, or I must have said it on the, on the show, and she says, I'm an Angels fan. Well, get an LA, get the Anaheim, you know, or whatever, where the hell they're playing now, uh, logo. All right, Patty, four years ago, I was let go from a job at a university within 90 days, introductory period. I'm reapplying four years later. What should I put is the reason for leaving? I don't know what was the reason you left. Did they let you go or did you 
leave? Uh, I mean, you said you were let go. I, 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 I'm not even sure how to answer that because I don't, uh, I don't actually know what the reason was that you left or, or that they let you go. One thing that I do know, Stacy, uh, Stacy, Stacy G, we got the video. I literally, I literally clipped a video for this question about if you don't make it through the probation period. Uh, but I, if you're reapplying, I wouldn't say anything. I would just put, I would put the application. In. But what I would really do is I would try to find somebody you really hit it off with during the probation. This is, I mean, I think the question really is how do I go about giving myself the best chances for reapplying? And that would be to go back to somebody who hopefully is still there, who you hit it off with, and get them to vouch for you. If you didn't make it past the the introductory period and it was because of performance, then I would I would want I would want some I would want somebody to vouch for me. I really would, because they're going to look back. They're going to see the data. They're going to see the stuff that was put in your folder. So I hope that helped. All right, all right, folks. Reminder: It's twelve oh five. Want to take a couple more questions? All next week, Monday through Monday through Thursday on the YouTube channel and Friday in the boot camp. If you are wanting to get in the boot camp, uh, we we had a special that was no longer available, but I'm going to start a special next week for Appreciation Week. But if you want to get in it now, if you send me an email at support at milewalk.com, we'll give you the private link to get the $100 discount and all the other assets that go with it. You can run through it this week and then you can show up on Friday where I'm talking about how to create opportunities for yourself when you are stonewalled, when you were stuck, when you were confused, when you were stymied, any of that stuff, you're not sure what to do, how do I create options for myself? I'm actually teaching that to the boot campers. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great session. So if you're interested in that, just email me at support at, at milewalk.com. Take advantage uh, of the job search challenge. Kara, can we can we re-add if I, I, I haven't been following the the chat toward the bottom, but can we re-add the job search challenge link? That's a that's a biggie. Pop pop that in there. I'll take I'll take some more questions that'll give you guys a chance to grab uh, to grab some of that stuff or check it out. Or if you got any if you ever have any questions, support at malwalk.com. Amir, how you doing? Irene Schmidt, hey. Avi. All right, Avi. Avi P. What advice do you have for somebody applying for entry level positions with minimal internship experience who is trying to transition to a different type of role they have experience with? So that's what I did. I was an electrical engineer. I have an electrical engineering bachelor's degree. I switched to uh, to information technology consulting because I thought that would be more fun and more people oriented, and I would get to see the world in different companies. If you are a you know recent college graduate or you are uh, you know you're, you're applying for entry level positions I'm assuming that you are a recent you didn't say it but reading between the lines there I'm guessing that that's the case here's what I would advise you and anybody else who is changing careers or making that change of any kind so going from school to, to your profession it's not likely it's not likely that you go from your degree into a job that uses your degree exactly. Most of us make a little bit of a turn or we make a little bit of a, a pivot or we make some a wholesale pivot. It's okay. That's normal. Actually, I think the people who, you know, electrical engineers that become electrical engineers, that's abnormal. It really is. So what I would do is I would make sure that I'm spending all my time looking for organizations who are solely interested or I should say, wholly open to hiring people without experience, meaning they advertise entry-level welcome, no experience required. We hire college students. There will, there will be explicit language somewhere. You are better off seeking that out and spending your time searching for that. 
for career changers. You need to leverage your network and, and get in into job interviews where people are open to hiring somebody who's making a change because they're looking past your specific function and they're looking deeply into your capabilities and abilities that transcend functions. Don't argue with people who are not open mind. This is for new college grad or recent college grads or people making career changes at any age. Don't argue with people who are closed minded. You're wasting your breath. Okay, it just isn't going to happen. Why why would you spend your time there? Go seek out somebody who is open and welcoming and and would embrace bringing you in and giving you a shot and teaching you the on, on the job training that you need. Your time is much better uh, off you're, you're better off spending your time that way. I'm not going to try to convince a whole lot of people who do not believe in buying online training that they should buy my job search boot camp. I want to introduce you. If you're open to it, awesome. You don't, you're not, that's fine. I'm not going to spend any time. I'm going to introduce it. I'm going to make sure it's available to you. I'm going to make sure you're aware of it. And then you decide. And if you got questions, you ask me, right? That's the same thing I do. I'm not going to try to spend, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to convince people who are not buyers or who don't believe in it. Don't you spend your time on employers who are not open to giving you opportunities. So check so check, check my college student stuff. And, and on my blog, there's a college section on my blog, on the Milo Academy blog. So head there and click the blog and then click the college student section and, and, and check that out. I also, uh, one last thing, Avi, a parting little gift here. I do have a video out there about how to get the job when you lack the experience. I would highly recommend watching that. All right, hope that helps. Dana, no need to apologize. Uh, I, I know how zealous you are. I'm rich, you ain't kidding. All right, let me see. Hey, Fred Federico. Okay, this is a good one. All right, Andy, what do you think about hobbies in the CV, especially for those over 45? isn't a good way to show energy when practicing sports. So Federico, my personal opinion, I'm sure if you ask 10 career coaches, you're going to get, well, you're going to get a bunch of different answers. I'm not for it. If you are 45 and you're running marathons and all that good stuff, and you are applying to active.com and shoe stores and sporting goods stores and those kind of things, then yes, because your hobby is in direct alignment with, with your passion for what it is that you do. If you are a white collar professional who runs marathons, it's not that it's not that big a deal to me. So many people in this world run those things, they play guitar, right? They they volunteer, they they do those things. Um, sorry, they have hobbies like that. Now, what I would say is your volunteering experience, that is important to add. Things that teach you organizational skills, leadership skills, or the fact that you have a good heart, I think those are valuable. But I'm not big on hobbies. I really, I'm not. I, I think your, your real estate, the, the space is, is uh, you're better off using it for something else. Take advantage of the real estate. Ivana, I love this one. Question, can I contact the hiring manager before applying for a job? Not only can you, I recommend that you do. 100%, no exceptions, I would go at the hiring official before I ever applied. I Applying, so I, 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 I want to share this with you guys. Uh, actually, I did not think I was going to tell you these stories, but I... I I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this one. So I know your pain. I know the ATS pain. You know how I know it? I'm going to give you one example, and only because this is off the top. I mean, this is real recent. Actually, it's been going on for a long time. You know LinkedIn? They have live video. Okay? They, they do. Some people can go live. That's right. Some people can go live. And there's no method to the madness of who they select, and it has nothing to do with your credentials. And the reason that I know that is because... I apply online. I've applied twice. And every time I go, I fill out a form, just like you guys fill out your applicant tracking systems. And I would say, not to brag, but I'm pretty damn qualified to go live on LinkedIn to talk to those people and give them free career and job search advice. If anybody's, if anybody's got the street cred, I think I do. You would agree. I know you would agree because the 200 and some out of you that are still here believe it, right? And you're my people. So I... I I get that, you get that. 
and I fill it out and I, I send them to my YouTube channel and I show them live streams that just like this that we're doing together and all that good stuff. And guess what I get every time? I get an automated message that says, thank you for your application. Then one hour later, within a time slot, I get an email from what looks like a person that says, thank you for your inquiry. Uh, we review the applications, but we will only respond to you via email if we have selected you. Okay, and then, they, and then they immediately close the case. Okay, that's like an auto bong. I get that. So we, we deal with companies like this where I have no control over that. That's okay, life's not fair. Right, so I'll just go live where I can. And when they finally open it up to everybody, then I'll do that. But we've been having some email issues. And we have proper routes that we need to go through from the big company that who, whose email system that we use. It's like, wor- it's like worse than dealing with the ATS. And we submit our tickets and they go into the abyss and we don't get the help that we need. And we try the chat and we try the email and we try these routes. We still don't get the responses at the speed that we're looking for, if at all. And we need something fixed because we need to support you. So yesterday, I sent an email directly to the CEO. I went out with using the tools I teach you how to use. I found his email address. I sent him an email. I immediately got an uh, email back that says, I'm, I'm really busy. You should contact this woman, who I'm assuming is Sam Mrs. I sent her the email. And I'm not going to tell you the language I used. But within the hour, not only was our stuff being handled, but stuff that care, tickets that she was submitting like a month or longer ago were all of a sudden being responded to with apologies about not getting back to us. The world is one big ATS if we let it be. Okay, it is. And, and that's basically what we're going to, we're going to have to live with bong letter after bong letter. Or we can take command and control of where we send our messages and not take no for an answer. And that's what I want you to do on your uh, Ivana and everybody else, I want you to contact those hiring managers because they're the ones that need you. They're the ones that are likely going to be open to talking to you. You are not going to beat the bot. It doesn't happen very often. And the higher up you go, the less chance you have. Now, yes, I'm sure some of you will get your jobs by applying, but most of you will not. Most of you will get them through your network. I have the statistics that prove this. You're in and you're out. Mark it in and mark it out. doesn't matter. I need you to take control of what you're doing. That job search challenge that I showed you, that's what that's all about, is taking command and control of what it is that you're doing, who it is you're sending it to, and we give you the tools and show you how to do that. So I don't know why I went off on that, but you know what? It's a little peek into my life. It's been happening to me. That was like the last 24 hours of my life that I'm dealing with that. So among many other things. So anyway, I... uh, Ivana and everybody else, I want you to go out there and get them. I want you all to have a great weekend. I, I, I really do. On Sunday, I'm going to send you a heartfelt message right from right here. I wrote it yesterday. I'm going to send it out to you. It's about my appreciation for all you've done for me. And I hope you, I hope you read it. And I hope you join me every day next week because I'm giving gifts each day that I don't normally give. These are limited edition. And we ain't, we're going to give them next week and that's it. Um, so, so keep an eye on your email. Open them in the morning. And if you can't make the live shows at 11 my time, which I guess we're going to be on daylight time next week, uh, if, you can't, if you can't do that, then make sure uh, that you at least check out the email. And if you're interested in the boot camp and some of these other uh, promotions that we have going, I hope you take advantage of them. And uh, if you got any questions, you know where to reach us. But in the meantime, everybody have a great weekend. And I will see you Monday. All right, take care.